Hey guys, to help run the forums, host the website, and travel, we've introduced a universal service fee for in-depth coverage, including this video. My goal is to be unbiased and transparent. It's a privilege to serve you. This is not an endorsement. Let's get into it. Perfect timing. Well, we were gonna cross the street, but then we were like, well, we have to wait for a train. We might as well do a little bike review. So we've actually got the Mod Bikes City Plus over there. We've got two of them. And I was just amazed at how much you guys are doing with the one that has like the child seat and everything. Yeah, yeah, this is a full mini cargo bike for a lot of uh, <laughs> random back cargo. <laughs> right, we're in Austin, your headquarters. We just rode our bikes here, not too far away up the street on South First. Yeah. And uh, we met a lot of people here, like families, people who commute to work, people who live downtown in condos and stuff. This is actually where I started Electric Bike Review because it gets hot. And there's some hills in Austin. So having that little extra boost of power to get you up the hills, and then potentially carrying around kids or some cargo is really good. I'm gonna let the train finish up. We'll go back over by the bikes. But I just thought this was kind of fun. Just like a really, really great day to just chill out, you know, and appreciate everything that's going on. And there we go. There's the end. Just take a little walk back here. Bye. Uh, okay. So Mod Bikes actually has a couple of folding bikes. We're looking at the City Plus. It's a little bit more expensive, but you get the hydraulic disc brakes and the cast rims, cast aluminum alloy. The regular yeah. City, it just has regular spoke rims, right? Regular spoke, it's a 36 volts battery. Um, it has really nice components. It's a little bit of an upgrade, but we have a little bit more of an affordable, kind of like an entry level electric bike. Does exactly. this one go, so this goes 23 miles per hour, roughly. A lot of your other bikes go 25 miles per yeah. hour, but you know, with the smaller wheels and stuff, it, it gets a little twitchy anyway, but I think that's, a factor of like having a hub motor that's you need a, a bigger wheel to get the higher speed is that right exactly exactly does the so, city go 23 or so the city because it's a 36 volts it's go the maximum speed is 20 miles an hour okay, um okay. here we have the 48 volt battery so it goes a little bit faster okay um, th thank still, you it's really affected by the size of the wheel of course so yeah i mean that's the thing cast wheels are great because they never go out of true right like spokes you got to go in there and adjust them every once in a while and especially if you're a heavier rider you know, this is a great way. Smaller wheels tend to be sturdier anyway because you don't have this big, like, you know, potentially flexing and the long spokes and everything. So this is probably a really tough bike. You approximate the max weight at 165 pounds, right? 265. Oh, 265. Yeah. I'm sorry. I'm just getting, like... <laughs> I'm, yeah. I weigh 135, so I was like, yeah. I'm pushing it, man. I'm going to be and at the... you need more for two more kids, so... <laughs> <laughs> That's right. I was like, yeah. this is going to be overloaded. Um, okay, so coming back to the bike, we weighed just the stock bike over here, 58.8 pounds, which is a little bit on the heavier side, you know, for a folding bike. But I think that comes back to the fact that it has suspension fork. This is an RST. It has 50 millimeters of travel. It definitely adds some comfort. These are larger. They're like fatter hybrid tires. 20 by 2.125. We got the cast rims, that adds a little bit of weight. This enormous battery pack, 48 volts, 12 amp hours. That's like 9.8 pounds right there, just for the battery. And then I love how you guys position it right at the center of the frame, so it's still pretty balanced. And the way this bike is set up, I mean, you really, it is like commuter ready, because you've got the plastic fenders with the mud flaps, which is kind of nice. Mud flaps are cool, because you know, if you kick that or it gets bumped, it doesn't crack it. Plastic's a little bit lighter, and potentially yeah, I mean, there's a little bit of rattle potential but when they're shorter like this they're not like a huge wheel so i think that was a great choice and when you fold these bikes sometimes they can get kind of bounced around and stuff so having something that's resilient like plastic that just kind of like flops back into position is is it's, that's my preference got a bolt-on rack back here 55 pound uh, max weight on that standard gauge tubing so you could put paneers on it or a trunk bag or the kid rack like we see back there. I love that they've got wired in lights. And this is the Star Union company that I've been learning more about. I used to call them Five Star. It's like a, it's just a Chinese company, I guess. It has two LEDs though and a big reflective surface. This is a big win for me as far as safety. And the reason I'm calling that out is because it also has this headlight, right? And it's a pretty bright headlight. It's got a nice beam. It does point where you steer because it's mounted to the arch of that suspension fork, which means it could bounce up and down and you are on a lower platform here. So frankly, I'd like it if the, the light was up here, but it gets kind of crowded. And then with a folding bike, the wires could get pinched and stuff a little bit more. So this is acceptable. This is what most 
not not even just folding bikes, but a lot of electric bikes tend to put the light down there. And this is this is a fairly decent light. Again, Star Union, that five star mark that you see there, and puncture protected reflective tires. That's huge. This bike comes in two different colors and we're looking at white here, gloss white. It also comes in like a matte black. Yeah, we also have the matte black version and still it comes with the brown seat and grips. Okay. The, the, Classy. the white is a big, you know, for me that's a big win because you get that bigger visual footprint and as it gets to be like evening or early morning, you're you're being able to get seen a little bit more because you do ride safe. lower. Yeah, some people prefer to have the white color for safety. You know, but it, again, it, maybe it's a his or her situation or you just want to, you know, maybe black's your color. It's definitely going to blend in with like the black fenders and a lot of these accessories are all black and that's just how electric bikes and bikes in general tend to be set up. Some things that jumped out to me when I was looking at this bike is that it has a chain guide, aluminum alloy too. So this is pretty tough and it's gonna protect that chain ring and almost act as another platform like that little stand arm there. Because again, folding bikes, they get tossed around a little bit more and you don't want that chain to flop off while you're riding or while you're transporting the bike. So that's a huge win. Back here we have a seven speed cassette, 11 to 28 tooth, you know, that's decent you'll notice that the front chain ring is a little bit bigger at 52 teeth and that sort of balances out the smaller wheel. So it slows down your cadence so that you're not like spinning really fast. And, and to me that says that they, they took some extra time to try to make this ride comfortably. And it has felt pretty good when I've been pedaling around. Shimano Altus, it's one step up from the base level. It does have tool free barrel adjuster so you can sort of extend this housing a little bit when you get cable stretch over time it means if you hear that clicking and stuff you can adjust it yourself versus taking it to a shop but these guys do have a shop right here in austin and a lot of their sales are local and they even just help people like if you have an electric bike they do a lot of really good service we spent some time back at the shop earlier and did a little tour so i want to cut to that and you can check it out for yourself hey guys we are on south first in austin i love this place this is where i started electric bike review Mod bikes didn't exist back when, when things were starting. And so it's so cool to see a local electric bike company slash shop. Uh, this is Door. Are you one of the founding members? I am, I am. It's nice fantastic. You You're very knowledgeable. This guy's been helping me out with all the stats and stuff. And I, I was like, what's going on out here? It's a party. I saw some guy like sitting on the bike taking pictures. Yeah, so this is one of our like coolest murals in Austin. Uh, we have our cool Mod Easy with the teddy bear in the side. It's like an Instagram hotspot yeah, so right here. This it, is uh, where everyone is coming to take the selfies. And we have... This is a Yep child seat, right? Which is owned by Thule now. And they make just some awesome accessories. You could do this with probably a lot of different bikes, but not every bike has a rear rack. Um, and, and this one, they uh, that's the new one that kind of clamps on from the yeah, sides, right? Yeah, so like an option like this basically gives you what a, like a big cargo bike can give you and you can get the same thing in a small foldable bike that you can yeah. fit in your car and have it all like with the matching colors and with the cool foldy lock that is just mounted to the frame. I uh, love that. Um, and this is a very cool option that a lot of people are choosing to use here in Austin. But if you live in Austin, you might not have a lot of extra space. So a folding bike, could be a good option because I mean things are blowing up around here. There's all these new kind of apartments and sky rise. Look at this. This one even has like a rear seat. Is this an option that you guys sell or what's what is that? Yeah, we do have a lot of like all the accessories that uh, you need to add to your bike. Different options to take your 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 kids with you. So this is a saddle with those, pegs. <laughs> yeah, that are foldable and um, yeah, this is a very very cool option. That a lot of people like to use um, as well as this. We also offer the different have solutions for storage so we're really kind of like focused on the commuters that need to have the old of those extra solutions to carry some groceries on their way back from work um, and yeah we're offering all those well and you've got a customer in there I think he has that model so I thought we'd go in and say hey to these guys so this is Mike over here. He's been helping me out with all my questions and getting the thing all scheduled. Thank you so much. And then my Josh, yes. Joshua, yeah. nice to meet you, man. Thank you. Uh, we were out there looking at some of the different bikes and you're, you're a real life customer here. Yeah, I feel like I'm a pretty typical Austin consumer. So I have an office downtown. I live not too far from downtown off a bike trail. Uh, so it just made perfect sense for me to get the electric bike. So every day I get to ride it to work. It's easy, it's clean, it's actually faster for me to ride a bike to work than it is to drive. Oh, so I hear I, you. Austin traffic too is like oh the my worst. It's, it's crazy. I think you used to live here, right? I did, yeah. Right. And this is how I got into e-bikes. I was yeah. like, I feel like 
it's like the same situation almost. <laughs> so it's totally yeah. cool. So I've been super happy with it. I, I came to Mod Bikes. Um, really, I, I looked at all your videos, did a lot of research. And, High five for that, buddy. Yeah, right. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, I did a lot of research and I liked that it was a local Austin company. They really stand behind their product and I love the bike. I think it looks great. And you got that one, right? Like, can you tell me why or which one? I got you... that one right in the back. The right up on the yeah. uh, that stand? What's that one called? It's like a mountain bike, kind of. Yeah, so it's a mountain bike and a city bike, so I get to use it. Uh, I get to use it on the trail because my trail. It's really, it's quite a rough trail in some parts, and then mm. it's a lot of city driving as well. So I like that I could do both. Yeah. And I like that it went up to like 25 miles an hour. Yeah. I like the big battery capacity, and I like the shocks when I'm going over the trails. What's well. that one called, you guys? This Mod is the Black. Mod Black. Mod the Black. Mod Black. I'm going to go check this out, because yeah. this would be my choice, too. I can't believe it. it's like a full suspension yeah. setup. They've got the mid-drive. you got the good balance here with the battery and stuff. So... Yeah, it sounds like that's the one that Joshua got. Even got lights, so it's a really cool combination. You know, a lot of times electric bikes, especially full suspension, you don't have rear rack bosses and stuff. So, we, you know, we're looking at a few of these. I love this one with like the sidecar. I wanted to take you guys behind the scenes real quick. This is the shop that they were talking about. And Joshua's getting like a like a little tune-up. I think if, if someone buys a bike, they get free tune-up yeah, or something? Yeah, if you are here from Austin, we're offering uh, complimentary tune-ups. Uh, so that's kind of like a part of the deal for our customers here in Austin and for the future branches we'll have around uh, around the country. And speaking um, of that, you guys are, it's it's like you're growing. This is Timothy, he's from the UK. Look at this, working yeah. two computers at once, man. This is your <laughs> hacker dude, right? <laughs> it was nice to, to work with him earlier. He's sending me some graphics. And then, is it Jordan? Yeah. Yeah, dude, are you one of the techs here, like a yeah. mechanic? Um, I'm actually building a, a bike right now for uh, a guy who came in and bought one yesterday. And wow. so he's gonna come in and pick it up today. It's another one of those, like the Mod Black. This yeah, is yeah. a popular model, it looks like. Yeah, here in Austin, there's a lot of trails and uh, kind of this bike with the way we built it, if you have a rack and integrated lights, so kind of like you can enjoy both worlds of a, like a commuter bike and also an off-road uh, bike that you can use it to commute to work every day, but also if you want to go for like a small adventure in the weekend. Yeah. So you have it all in once. Is that the same motor as the Berlin has? Yes, this is the same motor and uh, it's, a, it's a pretty powerful motor. And it's like 90 that, Newton meters. Yeah, the way that- Torque sensing, very smooth. Uh, the reason I'm, I'm highlighting some of this is because I'm, it doesn't sound like I'm gonna get to review this bike during this trip, but you know, I was, I was kind of impressed and wanted to show that up close and just give you guys an idea. I don't know if you if you do other tune-ups. Yeah, or... we're trying to help everyone in the electric bike community with uh, with also like fixing the bikes and also with explaining a lot. People are very confused uh, with buying a bike and. If you'll come to us or just give us a call, we'll be more than happy to kind of like help you. Um, wow. And as we talked earlier, it's not good or bad. It's just like, what's the right bike to fit your needs and uh, to fit your lifestyle? And um, we're, we're trying to help everyone that we can. We really believe in this uh, uh, transportation solution uh, that is just going and, and getting bigger and bigger here in the U.S. Absolutely. So, um, yeah, we, we, we see it as a mission to help everyone that we can in this industry. Um, is there anything else you want to say while we're at the shop and just looking around? And uh, Otherwise, we get back out there and check the bike out. Um, yeah, so I just kind of like wanted to briefly say something about our company. We're focused on, on, on people and we're focused on very... Um, straightforward bike that it's very easy to use uh, and everything is very simple it has everything in there it's full loaded with lights fenders racks um, USB ports and, and oh I love that yeah the display how it has like a plug-in and it's like two amps so you can charge your phone and yeah. actually charge it so, not just maintain it like being very commuter um, uh, focused this is we're, we're trying to, to get all those small features that will make your everyday commute to be a lot easier and kind of like stress-free that you have everything you need in there you have your lock integrated you have the very nice suspension on all the bikes so yeah even uh, the folding can... bike that's pretty cool yeah so, yeah we just want to make it simple for everyone um that's that's our goal okay well cool let's get back out there yeah let's do it okay so we're back outside just going through the rest of these these upgrades you got the fenders the rack bottle cage bosses big win whether you just put a folding lock there or maybe the hydration solution it's it's nice to have that the crank arms here are standard 170 millimeters, so the pedal cadence on this is really smooth. It feels natural. And then they've got these plastic folding Welgo pedals. They're a little bit, they're, they're decent, right? There are aluminum alloy uh, folding pedals. Maybe they add to the price. Um, 
a little bit to the weight. These haven't been a problem for me, but that's that's something that you could upgrade at some point if you wanted to. A lot of the other things like this suspension seat post EXA form gives you 40 millimeters of travel, and it's another area where it's like nice to have, and it works. It does a pretty good job. You can even take it out, and there's like an adjustable, like a bolt in the bottom, and you can tighten or loosen like preload, so you can preload that for your body weight. And even the saddle itself has been really comfortable. It's got these big rubber bumpers, Celly Royale look in. It's a gel saddle and you see it's like a little bit wider. So that gives you some nice comfort along with the ergonomic grips, the adjustable height stem, and then a 400 millimeter seat post. So you can really get that leg extension because this only comes in one size, like most folding electric bikes, like all of them. I don't, I don't think I've seen any folding electric bikes that come in different frame sizes. So they have to do these, these extra things to try to help it fit people. And the real benefit here is just the size when you actually fold it down it's it's very storable whether you're taking it on a train like we just saw or you're downtown and you have a condo and you need to like store it in in your house that's one of the big there's so many things to consider when you get an electric bike like do you have space yeah you can park it outside but then the lithium-ion battery cells extreme heat and extreme cold can be kind of hard on those so being able to bring your whole bike inside and not worry about people messing with the display and stuff and tampering with that that's a really neat thing and folding bikes really let you do that. They've got a kickstand here. It's center mounted and it's in a position where it does create that pedal lock. For me, that's a bit of an annoyance, but you know, there's not a whole lot of extra room here. What they've done is gone with hydraulic. These are Tektro Ariga E-Comp e-bike specific brakes with 160 millimeter rotors, three finger levers, and they both have motor inhibitors that double as a brake light activation. So that is really cool. I'm gonna go ahead and do that. See, I'm pulling the brakes. Even though the lights aren't on, people are gonna see me a little bit easier. And we booted this up just kind of by default, but you can actually put a password in this. So if you're commuting to work or something, it would come on with a password so people couldn't tamper with your bike. Because as it stands, you know, it does have a throttle and that throttle is hot. So it could be, you know, at a bike rack and someone could be messing around with it or whatever. I, I think it's great to have so much battery capacity a pretty powerful motor. This is 350 watts, but going off of a 48 volt and adjustable amperage here, you can really make this thing feel peppy. And with the smaller wheel diameter, what you're getting is a big mechanical advantage, both for the brakes, the disc brake rotors, and for the motor. So, you know, when it doesn't have to turn this huge wide thing, it's, it's a lot stronger, more powerful, just like we were talking about the strength of those wheels, being able to support more weight. That's just, a, it's a pretty good setup not completely unique to this bike but i think this bike combines a lot of these beneficial you know component choices and hardware choices nice zippered branded kind of a canvas wrap around the cables because there are a lot of cables remember we got the trigger throttle here we got two cables coming off of each brake lever i love that they have motor inhibitors on both and that brake light and then we've got the trigger shifters down here they've gone with like Tr trigger, I don't know, just down here shifters versus thumb shifters up top. And that's interesting because a lot of times when you have a, a throttle, you'll see companies put it on the left side because it's hard to fit everything over here, but they've done a good job choosing parts that actually work. And it's, it's a little bit tight, but this is a two-way trigger shifter and then a multi-shift upper. So it gets the job done. I mean, it, you know, depends on how, how you line this up. There's some contact happening there, but for me, this is the, this is the preferred uh, setup just because I tend to be like right-handed. You've even got the bell over here, which you isn't working perfectly. I just got to line it up right. So there's some crowding going on, but this is their demo bike. It was a little bit dirty even when I got on it, and it seems to be holding up all right. So I'm trying to be honest with you guys, give you some good feedback. If you wanted to upgrade, you know, the suspension fork, since this is only 25 millimeter stanchions, 50 millimeter travel you know, does have preload adjust at least. So you can preload it again, just like that suspension seat post. If you want to replace this and upgrade to something like a body float or, you know, the connect, um, thud buster, there's a lot of options you could, and it's 22, uh, 20, 72.2, 27.2. Oh yes. gosh, yeah. so many numbers. <laughs> That's the standard seat post diameter is what I'm trying to get at. So there's a lot that you could do with this bike, but so many of the choices have already been made and they've been made well. Ador, do you know if on the black one, does it have a black lower for the suspension? Is so it, yes, it, it is all matches? black. Yes, it, it all matches. The, the rims are black, the suspension is black, Ooh. and we kind of like make it black with brown to 
keep that very classy look. Sounds nice. Yeah. They, they didn't have one at the shop, so I'm kind of like, oh, that does sound. And it still has a reflective tire, so you're still getting it some is. visibility. Yes, it is for sure. Okay, cool, cool. I wanted to actually like see this thing folded, maybe take off the battery. One of the downsides, so it's nice that the battery is removable, but one of the downsides is that there's no like flip up mechanism on this saddle. So you have to do the quick release and you'll notice it's kind of set up at an angle and the pinch point is at an angle too. So they've, this frame is done pretty well, but you've got to like basically take this all the way off like this, set it down somewhere. There's the preload adjust by the way. And then you've got to unlock the, the battery. And one of the complaints I have about this is that when the bike is on, you can't take the keys out. And they, you know, they're dangling around, potentially snagging on your dress or something, just making some extra noise. And then when you get to work and you're like, okay, uh, off, but locked to the frame, you can pull the key out. Now, you know, you've either, if you've got the keychain, it was dangling. If not, you need to like clip this onto your keys or somehow not lose it. I, I wish you could pull the battery out in the on position. Like a lot of other electric bikes that are, they use newer battery designs do allow that, but this is a Silverfish. It's a very like proven universal battery pack. And if you go one step further, you push it in, now you can pull it out and the battery's completely unlocked. Will you pull that off for us real quick, Door? She so just slides right up. Here's the metal rail, the two pins at the base. There's the battery pack. Again, 9.8 pounds. This is some serious capacity right 48 volts 12 amp hours that's that's significant it there's a charging port i love that the charger that comes with this has like the metal end piece because it's a little more sturdy mm -hmm. it's a two amp charger so you know what what was it again 12 you know so this is like five and a half or six hours to fill this with a two amp charger but the charger is lightweight it's like 1.5 pounds very compact easy to toss into a bag and there is a little led charge level indicator built right into the top of the pack and that handle so don't drop it, avoid extreme cool, avoid extreme heat, especially heat. Maybe you have to store this somewhere in your garage or whatever, take good care of the battery pack. If at some point this ever fails, you guys sell replacements? We do, we have replacement, we give service to all of our customers at any time. We have an 18 month, um, I think it's comprehensive warranty that yeah. you offer. And with this battery, it's not that proprietary. So you could go to like an FTH Power or some of these other companies that do repacking. So I feel like this is a pretty safe choice long term. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, then we have to, go, let's go ahead and put it back on real, real quick. Thanks for your help. So it's on there. I got the keys in my pocket, I think. There we go. Thanks for getting that, that seat set up again. He's going extra low, because he knows what's coming up, right? I'm gonna do a, a folding real quick here, buddy. Yeah, let's do that. So we like to unlock that, that top portion, which is, it offers pretty good adjustability but see if you go too far there's a minimum insertion point label and these cables start to get stretched out and when you turn they can really start to stretch from down there so be conscious of that it's nice if you could do a test ride first and see if it fits you and then there's a joint at the middle with like a locking pin and why don't you go ahead and just do it and i'll i'll narrate got the, the pedals here there's the pin unlocks knees it perfect sets it down on that steel kind of a, a platform rest there folds the top part and look it's really compact it really i've measured this like the length height width this is one of the contact points like right here you can see that the the fork actually touches the rack so a lot of times if you want to really take care of your stuff and you don't like the scratches you could put a towel between it this is an aluminum lower i did check that so you're not at least you're not going to get rust sometimes you get a cheap fork that's steel lower um but yeah, I mean, it's not gonna rust, it's just gonna get scratched up over time and it'll start to look silver or black from the from the black rack. And then you guys actually have, I think it's like a Velcro strap or something, We right? do have a Velcro so you can strap it if you wanna put it in the car or anything like that. It makes it one piece and a lot easier to transport. I've seen, yeah, and that's, that's great because in the past they're like magnetic type of things or rubber things. I feel like Velcro works pretty well. And you can also use your own solution, get your own Velcro and use the towels and, and everything. A lot of times, there are some some forms of public transportation like buses in some cities where they won't let you bring a bike on board unless it's in like a bag or folded and folded and yeah and, yeah, and this is so this is like a great option for those situations but again it is heavy so i personally might take the battery and then separate it from the bike just to take that weight down a little bit and i could carry one in each hand or you get a special bag for this and stuff um i think that's a, a pretty good overview of the folding but i have also seen where sometimes you can 
pick it up from right here and actually walk the bike a little bit. Have yeah, you ever done that? You yeah, you definitely have this option to kind of like fold the bike and then roll with it just like this. He's a pro. There yeah. you go. Look at that. <laughs> that's a that's a good tip. Uh, really neat to see that and perfect positioning, dude. I don't know if you planned this, but 12 magnet sealed cadence sensor right there it goes right into the control box. And that's another way these batteries are a little bit more universal because the controller is separate. So I just, I love that they're using nicer hardware. It's not gonna get bumped out of position and cause errors like some of the older cadence sensors. Maybe we can go ahead and put it back together. And while Dora is doing that, I'm gonna show you what's possible with these things. So they've got the Thule Yep, like front seat for a little baby, super cute. And then down here, they've got a, a matching blue a foldy lock, folding lock on that a bottle cage provision, which I love because so many bikes kind of skip that and they, they probably think you know oh it's sideways like no one wants to put a bottle that's going to leak all over but there are so many great accessories that can take advantage of that so I love that they kept it and then back here we got this little guy pandemonium and we've got that rear rack just super perfect for this yep child seat on the back it's it's a bigger one right so up here they also have like a little phone mount because there is a USB port built into that display which I totally love so he's he's booting it up for us he pressed the I button Check this out, full size USB type A and it's five volt, two amps. So you get extra charging power for your portable electronics. Like maybe you want to mount a phone or some lights or additional lights. I was talking about staying extra visible. You can do that and you can take advantage of that super high capacity battery pack. So kudos to you guys. I really like this display. I mean, it's not removable, but it does swivel. So you can reduce glare. It's three inches. It's grayscale, monochrome, and it is backlit, so it's actually pretty easy to see um, in all sorts of different lighting conditions. I'm actually gonna pull the bike like this because I feel like the display might be a little bit easier to see for you guys. So the first thing you see is the battery, five ticks. So each tick is like, uh, you know, 20%. It'd be nice if that was 10 or maybe a percentage readout, but this is pretty standard in the e-bike space. We're in assist level one by default, but you can take it to zero if you want, and then you can just use this as a kind of a scooter, like a little trigger throttle over here. And then of course we go all the way up to five by default. You can get into the settings menu and change it to three levels or nine levels, and that's gonna give you more or less of a change between each of those steps. We've got a watt meter. It's like a little graph that goes up to show you how hard that motor is working, give you some feedback. And then speed, it's in miles per hour. And then down here, trip distance. If we press the I button, it goes to odometer, max speed, average speed, ride time, and then back to trip distance, just cycles around. To get that headlight and taillight activated, you hold plus, and then the screen actually dims a little bit when you do that. So the backlight is constant bright, and nothing else happens when you pull the brake levers. It's just always on. And then there's that headlight we saw. If you want walk mode, you just hold this button here, and that helps you to just move slowly through a crowd. Um, maybe if you got a flat tire or something like that, it's, it's nice to have that option. And then if we hold plus and minus together, we get these cool settings. So you can clear trip, set the units from miles per hour to kilometers per hour, change the wheel diameter. These are 20 inch wheels, so I, I wouldn't change that. Speed limit, 23 miles per hour is kind of like as fast as this can go, but you could always lower it too, which is nice for people who might not feel as stable. You, you know, you've got some kids or something like that. It's, it's actually really nice, especially on a folding, smaller wheeled bike to be able to lower the speed. Set the voltage, so that's gonna make it more or less like punchy. Uh, set the power, set the current. And I think is current, is that also gonna change like how quickly it accelerates? So current is actually the acceleration. Um, adjusting that will allow you to kind of like get less of a kick every time you're using the throttle or pedal assist, but extending the range or some people that have don't want to have such a responsive um, um, motion and want to get a kind of like a slower start. So I think that's a very cool feature. It is, it is. And I'm glad you're here because I mixed up when I said set voltage, that's for if this was a 36 volt bike, but it's not, it's a 48 volt. Yes. So you want to make sure yes. you're on the right voltage. Yes. How this about the, setting set power? Current, yeah. We were talking about the current so that- Current is for basically how- Basically setting the amps. Setting the amps. Setting power, that's when we were like zero to three, zero to five, or zero to nine. Yes, and in there also you can adjust each level of pedal assist. Uh, basically, you can choose the percentage of each level of pedal assist. So mm. that means that you have a lot of control with the display and you can really kind of like um, set your own settings to however you like it because everyone likes to have it 
set have his settings different so. so i'm so glad you're bringing you know, we've been reviewing these bikes all day this is like the last one which is why i can't remember like the seat post <laughs> diameter perfectly but one of the takeaways is that this display is pretty easy to to use in my opinion and it's got a lot of adjustability and it's not just about what you prefer it might be to maximize your range because yes. the lower current it means it's going to accelerate a little bit slower and that's going to save you battery and i actually think these the smaller wheels and stuff um i think they tend to do pretty well because of that mechanical advantage anyway a lot of power is drawn when you're when you're accelerating so these get that advantage speed sensor set back light sets password the password we talked about earlier so when you're turning on the bike it would lock people out so they couldn't mess with the bike and that's pretty cool not every display lets you do that what's the speed sensor thing the speed sensor is just uh, allowing you to change the cadence sensor from 12 uh, to 6 magnets um, it's just kind of like hmm. an internal setting uh, that you don't actually need to does this one have 6 that. or 12 magnets like in the sensor have six magnets okay yeah. cool yeah. okay cool so it's like yeah um nice to be able to I, i've never seen that before you press i and it just says okay so you're like yep we're ready to ready to go door at this point i'm gonna hold the i button and it's gonna exit it will save an exit save yes. an exit and we're back to the main menus might be time for a ride but i want to give you a chance to chime in with anything else that i might have missed or that you care to share no, I think that this kind of bike uh, and all the adjustability in this bike can fit a lot of people with different needs uh, and it covers kind of like a, a wide range of, of um, usages uh, and the ability to have all the cargo and have those <laughs> solid uh, rims that you can carry some extra weight without um, you know, any need to worry about uh, breaking a spoke or anything like that. Uh, makes it a very functional bike and a very convenient bike for um, this type of uh, city that you just want to go and ride around the other thing is you know functionality is one thing but fit is another and some of your other bikes are so tall yeah. like you you have the there's the geneva berlin or berlin, yeah, berlin. okay berlin. i'm berlin like cities black. in germany right yes <laughs> um so there's the berlin and then is it the the easy the easy that was yeah. really cool but high step only and these mm -hmm. are a little bit more kind of a mid step yeah, yeah. exactly very so, approachable so for you know petite people the, seating height can be a little bit lower so for like shorter people this can be something more convenient or for old, older people that want to have both legs on the ground all the time this yes. bike definitely allows that um, and the ability to make it not as punchy um, as it comes in default for sometimes for older people makes the ride more convenient yeah. um it's just more enjoyable if you're not freaking out and we find yeah we find customers to have all of those options to be something that, that is really useful for them yeah fantastic the other options that i want to clarify is that you can actually remove that throttle and you can adjust the speed to make it class one you can add the throttle and at 20 miles per hour that's class two and then with the throttle at 20 and the bike at unlimited or whatever you know you get to 23 24 then it's you're kind of getting to this class three territory where it becomes more of a, a higher speed commuting bike but i find that sometimes if it's a really heavy rider they can't reach the full 23 24 it miles definitely anyway. changes with the different riders um but all those um, all those modifications and options that we added to the bikes because this is a new field here and rules are changing in the different cities and sometimes they can say that a different bike trail uh, only class one can go on that bike trail so we want to have the customer to have the option to actually exactly. modify everything so you have you enjoy both worlds in the same bike um and i think yeah. it's it, it's a very convenient also option to have more choices yeah what's well, nothing wrong with that i think it's a good time to hop on now you, you yeah. good for that yes let's go for it just have to look both ways <laughs> no make sure no, no train <laughs> i was talking this whole time trying to figure out i always thought that those sealed sensors were 12 and yeah. door was like yeah actually i think they are we were just on a different menu so it is a 12 magnet sensor in there regardless you still see there's a little bit of delay to start and stop that's just how cadence sensors are so again overriding with those brake levers is a real a big win yeah. and i'm glad you guys have that feature thank you S especially with the hydraulic disc brakes i mean this is this is great like this is kind of as good as you get um especially in, unless you get to something like crazy fancy with like a mid drive and multi sensors and stuff like that and then the price goes up quite a bit from there so good setup thanks thank man thank you Okay, Dora, go ahead. Let's go. We're on a hill, and this thing has no problem starting because of those smaller wheels. 
He's got his lights on, and the, I love how Yep has all those reflectors on the back. It's just awesome. Do a little no hands riding there. Oh yeah. We got some squeaky brake action on the, it's a demo bike, right? So it's probably a little dusty. <laughs> it is, it needs some maintenance. <laughs> well, the hydraulic brakes are such a big win, especially if you have the smaller hands or, you know, just maybe weaker hands because they're so smooth and consistent. They're so smooth and they're kind of like maintenance free. Uh, yeah. they're, they're always there. And yeah, that's definitely a big, big plus. Let's go. We done. Oh boy. I mean, it's just level five and it's almost like more powerful than I, than I need here. I can see his suspension fork going on up there and also that suspension seat post. It's really nice to have when you've got the smaller 20 inch wheels just cause they've got that higher attack angle and uh, they don't always feel as smooth going over you know, bumpy terrain and stuff. So, kind of a full suspension feel. Okay guys, from here you can see that steel 52 tooth chain ring with a nice alloy guide. Keeps you from dropping the chain. And then 11 to 28 tooth seven speed cassette back here. No slap guard, I've noticed that on mod bikes. They just, they don't have slap guards on, on a lot of their bikes. And I also noticed the battery comes up pretty high. So if you tried to swap this suspension seat post and tried to go any lower, like I don't think it would work. I think you'd be colliding with the battery. So this is a good candidate for having a suspension post. And then he said it's a, a six magnet sensor. I thought it was 12. There's a, always a little bit of delay, especially if you're pedaling slowly. So it's really nice that you've got those motor inhibitor overrides on both brake levers. And then back here, you can see there's a little bit of rubber damage happening on that cap. And then, you know, just the derailleur and the power cable, that's all kind of vulnerable. It's sensitive. So there are like these derailleur guards that I see on some bikes, which can be pretty useful on a folding bike. And I think you can get those aftermarket and put it on. And I would consider doing that. Um, something I feel like they could add to their bikes just for shipping and stuff to keep them extra safe. This one's, it's still working. It's in decent shape, but it's just a vulnerable thing. And you hear people in the bike space say, always lay your bike down on the non-drive side. That's the other side with the, the disc brake rotors. And those are vulnerable too. You don't want to bend them, but that's why the kickstand is always on the left. So anyway, I'm going to start off. I'm in pedal assist level five, which is the highest. You're going to hear this thing starting and stopping pretty clearly, I think, because, you know, it's a planetary geared hub motor and there's gears in there and it's a zippier sound, but they're compact, they're relatively lightweight, and it's what you see on the majority of electric bikes. They freewheel without any drag. So here we go. Pretty good stopping performance, good acceleration, but as you could see, there's a little bit of delay after I stopped pedaling before the sensor actually sent the message to the motor, it's like, stop, they no more assist. And that's where those motor inhibitor brake levers are really, really useful. This is perfect. Thank you so much for taking me on a little tour. Thank you for coming. We timed it perfectly, guys, to see that train, and it's also kind of rush hour, so we're trying to be extra careful. We've got all our gear on and stuff. We've got the white bikes, and everyone's having fun. For the full written review, I'll see you guys back at electricbikereview.com. We've got all the measurements and everything. And of course, chime in if you've owned one of these bikes or worked with these guys. They seem super friendly. And to me, that's that's awesome because you know electric bikes aren't completely maintenance free, especially if you're riding it all the time. Like you do end up with a squeaky brake or maybe you do get a flat. And it, it, if you don't have all the right tools and stuff, being able to stop by your local neighborhood shop is, is wonderful. But if you're not, these do, they do ship uh, nationwide in the US the contiguous US for free, yep. which is fantastic. You got that 18 month warranty. Yep. It's pretty sweet. So that's the City Plus from Mod Bikes. I uh, love you guys, ride safe. We'll see you next time.